I moved here almost six years ago today, and one of the first people that I met was Brett. And I met Brett and his puppy, and he said, hey, you know what? We're celebrities. We're, our picture's on the back of your building. And so, so that's what I remember. You know, as, as I was sitting there and I was talking with Harry about that, the original program had me going first. And so when we were talking about that, I was like, oh, no, I don't, I don't want to go first. But then as I'm sitting there and listening to these storytellers, after every person, I'm thinking, man, I'm sure glad I don't have to follow Pete. Man, I'm sure glad I don't have to go after Joyce. Man, I'm sure I don't, glad I don't have to go after Jeff, and so on and so, so forth. And now I'm like, man, I wish I didn't have to follow Harry. So as the penultimate speaker, before we get to, to Chuck, um, how about we give all of our, of our storytellers tonight another round of applause, because they've done an amazing job. So I'm, I'm going to tell you a little story about myself and how, you know, even the most unfortunate accident can have a profound impact and can shape your perspective for a lifetime. So as Brett said, I grew up on a farm in southern Ohio, the son of non-repentant hippies. I think they probably hung out with Ron Kibbe. Uh, <laughs> you know, we had... We had pigs, we had a goat, we had a ton of chickens, we had a pony. Um, there was a little bit of agriculture, and I learned later that the uh, cash crop was not tobacco. Um, <laughs> what we didn't have was an indoor bathroom. So I spent the first 10 years or so of my life navigating an outhouse, and I wasn't the smartest kid in the world, but I knew that that really sucked. You know, but it was something that, that we worked through. We had a natural spring on the property. We did later get running water, but there was still no sewer system, so we would take baths on a partially secluded back porch, and we just kind of kind of worked through it. But you know, this this is not a sad story. It was an amazing way to grow up, and it's you know, it was something that um, shaped me as a child. I ran through those woods, and I ran with our uh, German Shepherd. I played in creeks. I swung on grapevines. I tormented the farm animals. I even rode the pigs. I'll, I'll tell you a little secret. They really don't appreciate it. Um, you know, but th this was a great way to grow up as a kid, and I think some of, some of that's lost on... Uh, current generation, certainly on my teenage daughters, I promise you that. Um, and so we, we had a lot of time to bond as a family. And so there were many nights that we spent huddled around an old coal burning stove. And it was there that my dad taught me how to read before I even went to school on vintage 1960s comic books. And that was where my love for storytelling and for journalism was born. Because in those comic books, newspapers were these amazing places and just awesome, magical things happened. Um, but the thing that really sparked me and captured my imagination as a young child was those spandex-clad superheroes. And they, they did amazing things. They had value systems that you would aspire to as a young boy. And they really, it's just something that you connected with. And we, we spent lots of time reading those stories over and over and over again. And I grew a great appreciation for those super heroic efforts. But I knew that these were just windows into a make-believe world and that superheroes didn't exist. Or at least that's what I thought. Over the years, I've had lots of evidence to tell me otherwise. One of the earliest pieces of that was when we were still there on that farm. I was... Uh, probably uh, eight years old, we were out cleaning up a campsite, and um, I was doing what eight-year-olds do, and I was not paying attention and not listening to, to mom and dad, and I, I fell into a, a old fire pit. Now, the coals were long since cooled, but people had thrown glass bottles into the, into the pit, so underneath those ashes was um, shards of glass. I sliced my hand wide open. I still bear the scar to this day. In my memory, blood shot out of my hand like a geyser at Yosemite or, um, uh, you know, 
Yellowstone. Yeah, thank you, thank you. So um, that in my head, that's what I saw. I was absolutely convinced I was going to die. I was just waiting for my hand to fall off. And then, then something crazy happened. It was like time slowed down. I looked at my father, and it was almost like the panels that you see in a comic book. He rushes towards me, and he rips his Long John shirt off like the Incredible Hulk, swoops me up, and wraps my hand up and, and says everything's going to be okay. And so it was on that day that not only did my dad become my hero, but I also grew an appreciation that there are real superheroes in this world. I've been blessed in that two-decade career in community journalism to meet so many other real-life superheroes. They can be hard to find sometimes. Um, certainly, it's um, easy to pick out those who in uniform. Our men and women in police, fire, and the military absolutely are heroes. But sometimes it's hard and you overlook some of the other everyday heroes. It might be the elected official who understands the true meaning of public service. It might be the business owner who puts himself at risk to take care of the underserved or the discriminated against. It might be the senior citizen who can barely make ends meet herself but is always there to lend a neighbor a hand. And I've met all those people and many more. Some of you are probably in this room. Um, now I work with Shriners Children's Hospital in Lexington, and I see miracles every day. Our doctors and our nurses do amazing things, and they help change the trajectory of the lives of families. But more importantly, I see it on these kids' faces. Kids, the kids that we see and the kids that we take care of, they often, not all of them, some of them are just for routine treatment, but many of them face significant adversity. And they all share common traits of an indomitable spirit and smiles that just light up a room. And so to me, when you look at those, that's proof that there are real superheroes in this world. Ordinary people do extraordinary things every single day. They save lives. They make a difference. They change the world. And the thing that we all need to, to keep a hold of is that we all have that capacity inside of us. Each one of us can be those superheroes. It's not about you, what you wear. You don't need a, a fancy nickname. It's all about the small things that make our world better each and every day. And no spandex is required. Thank you guys for coming out.